poly leaders are so versatile. Um, if you're not using them yet, you got to get on this train. They will transform your fishing. I can guarantee you. We're going to talk quickly about um, how to use them, how to rig them, when to use them, and why to use them. And more importantly, what the hell is a poly leader? All of that right now. Here we go. First and foremost, what is a poly leader? It is a leader. It goes on just like a leader. You take your weight forward fly line um, and then you just loop to loop connection, uh, one of these guys, and then a little bit of tippet and you're good to go. We'll talk more in depth about rigging them and, 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 and all that, but um, that's essentially what it is. The thing that's kind of cool about poly leaders is that they come in varying densities so um, and lengths as well. Uh, this one here is an eight foot and it is a five inch per second. Uh, and then of course I have another five inch per second, but it's a five foot. But here's something interesting is that we have now uh, like a clear intermediate, which I think is an inch and a half per second. It's an eight foot. Yep, it is. Uh, and then this one, I think this is a floating. Yes. So this is a floating one. Now, there's all these like different densities and, and, and some float and some sink really fast. Why the heck do you want these? Now, this is no replacement for a sink tip and we'll get into that in just a second. But let's say you just wanted to get a little deeper and you're on the river and um, you're swinging flies. Uh, and if you haven't uh, watched how to swing flies, watch my previous video. Um, it'll go over the basics and it'll get you started and you're gonna love it and you're gonna catch fish, I can guarantee you. But Let's say you're swinging flies with a standard nylon leader and you're like, you're on top and you're like, I need to get like three or four inches below the surface. Well, that's where these poly leaders can help you as well. Um, if you're on a lake and um, you know, you're bass fishing, you're popper fishing, okay? And you're using uh, a floating uh, poly leader. And now you're like, well, the, the fish are not going on top. They're, they're like, you know, a foot down, two or three feet down and, and they're smashing down there but I don't have uh, any flies with weight to them to get you down. Well, that's where a poly leader can really help you. Now, more about um, the construction of it. So a poly leader, uh, think about it like it's a regular leader, but then it's dipped in different types of density uh, 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 coatings. So this one, it has like tungsten, I believe in it. Um, uh, you know, and the SA, the sonar leaders, it, it's, a, it's a poly leader as well. So this is from uh, scientific anglers and this is from Airflow. The whole thing is like, you'll hear people uh, argue, you know, it's not a sink tip, uh, it's not a full sinking line. And they're right, it's not. So this is what's kind of cool and you could use it to your advantage uh, when using a poly leader uh, setup rather than like a sink tip. And, and here's the deal is that with a poly leader, um, because it's a leader, all you do is attach a little bit of, um, uh, tip it to the end of the poly leader and you're good to go. Now they do say on here recommended uh, put a, an additional 4 to 12 feet of tippet on here. I don't do that. I probably at the most go 4 feet uh, with my tippet sections on these um, and it's because I find that when it comes to presenting flies uh, around like the 3 feet anywhere from like 2 to th 2 to 3 feet for me has worked in my waters and very effectively. Now um, back to the difference between them and like a, a sink tip is this a sink tip is more stout it's more uh, it's it's uh, it's it's definitely more rigid um, you're gonna get a little more hinging with them as well because uh, well of course they're thicker so you know you're always gonna have a little bit of hinging but with a sink tip you're going to be adding a leader a tapered leader sometimes to the end of that sometimes you want one it depends on what you fish for and how you fish it but for the most part you're gonna put like a tapered leader section on the end of your sink tip or your uh, full sinking fly line whereas with this is just a, a tippet section another thing is is the way a poly leader sinks versus the way a full sinking fly line sinks now if you were to grab this five foot sinking um, poly leader and you were to drop it in like a you know a, a vat of water or, or, or whatever but it has to be like still water not moving or anything and you were to drop it in it's not gonna drop uniformly down what it's going to do is it's going to favor the loop connection part, which is, of course, filled with more stuff, you know, more dense. 
So it's of course it's gonna it's gonna go down and sink like this. So it's not a uniform sinking rate. That's something to keep in mind. It's very important when it comes to polyliters because um, with a sink tip, a sink tip is gonna be a little more uniform. Uh, it's it's you know it's that the whole section is basically the same density. So it does that. Same with like a a, a fly a, a, a sinking fly line. Uh, for the most part, they they kind of um, sink nicer and everything uh, like that. I'm, I'm sorry, lack of a better term, but uh, you kind of get what I'm saying. So when you are now casting it out and let's say you have uh, you have them both at uh, a, a full sinking line and a polyliter side by side an a b comparison what you will see let's say you're two feet down on both sides so you have your uh, i don't know let's say a mickey finn fly uh, and uh, they're both down two feet under the water the thing is when you start retrieving it your polyliter uh, is going to go up uh, uh, like quite a bit up it's going it's not going to stay down at that two feet it's it's going up now with a full sinking and uh, a sink tip fly lines it's going to remain close to that two feet if not on that two feet uh, uh, sink or um, uh, at that two feet depth and that's because of the design of it it's meant to keep your fly in a certain zone so if you are targeting fish that are in a certain uh, column of water uh, that is something to really keep in mind when you are looking at uh, if a polyliter is going to do the trick for you. And that's one thing that I like about full sinking lines is that I could cast out and I could be at, you know, three feet down. And I know when I'm retrieving, uh, if I'm not like really stripping insanely hard, I know I'm in that in that zone that I want to be. With a polyliter, you don't have that. What you have is a more oscillating type action which could also be a really good thing if you are especially going for bass or uh, uh, smallmouth bass in particular. They, they like that, you know, up and down moment, uh, movement uh, in the river or in, in, uh, in the lakes. It's really, really uh, advantageous to have that type of uh, action. So I hope that kind of uh, clears the air with a with a sink tip and a and a full sinking line. You're you're kind of staying at that uh, that depth more consistently than with a polyliter, and it's just by design. You know, with the polyliter, you have you know your way forward line. It's pushing everything up, uh, and uh, and of course you know just the design of it with the tapered uh, section. You know, it it doesn't have that full uh, nice gradual sink rate uh, from from tip to tail. Uh, so that's something to really, you know, keep in mind. But of course, there's advantages and disadvantages with any setup that you go with. So now let's talk about why they're so versatile and the rigging options that you can go with with a uh, polyliter. So first and foremost, I'm going to talk about uh, my experiences with polyliters. And I use a lot of like these five foot ones. And the reason I use the five foot ones is I use a lot of uh, single hand Skagit uh, fishing. And with single hand Skagit, um, I'm using anywhere from a seven and a half foot to a nine foot rod. And when I'm using my seven and a half foot rod, I prefer to use five foot sinking polyliters. And the reason for it is because I kind of like to get into like really tight situations with uh, my, my rod. And with a eight foot sinking polyliter, you kind of, you're going to get caught up in the branches and everything because, uh, uh, you know, spay casts and Skagit casts are, are very dynamic. So you're going to kind of be like whipping uh, your, you know, your whole rig around and you don't want to keep catching it on stuff. So minimizing uh, how much polyliter you have out there uh, is really good. Now, when I do the small uh, stream stuff, I'll usually put about a foot or two of tippet on the end of my polyliter. And we'll talk actually now, that's probably a good idea. Um, how do you attach tippet to your polyliter? Because if you look at a polyliter, it is basically just uh, a piece of, of monofilament sticking out of an impregnated uh, tungsten um, portion. So you have this little monofilament, and then what do you do with it? Well, if you get a sonar leader um, from SA, they actually put on a mini swivel. So you would just attach uh, your tip it to a mini swivel with like a clinch knot, standard clinch knot, and link will be below how to tie that thing. Um, or with this, uh, with the airflow, because they don't put those on, you could get a tippet ring, uh, you could use a mini swivel, or you could use a loop-to-loop -loop connection. So you would uh, tie a perfection loop on the end of your polyliter, 
And then you would take a section of tippet, make it perfection loop, and do a loop to loop on that, and then take whatever desired length of tippet you want and go that way. What I've noticed is like a, um, a blood knot is very strong, strong knot. And uh, with a blood knot, I've actually broken off the monofilament core section of my uh, monoliters, or uh, rather polyliters here. And the reason for it is because of, uh, they're just really strong knots. Uh, by the way, link will be below how to tie one of those as well. Um, and uh, I found when it comes to uh, this, this particular style, like the airflow ones, the loop to loop just seems to be the best. Uh, I have used uh, tippet rings, and tippet rings are really, really good, especially if uh, I want to use something like uh, 2x uh, for my for my uh, uh, for my tippet section, or if I use you know anything thin like that, like 2x and lower, I will definitely uh, use a uh, just a little uh, tippet ring, like a two and a half mil or a two millimeter tippet ring, and I will attach that tippet ring uh, with a a standard clinch knot, and I've never had or lost a, a tippet ring. I've never had a, a failure with that. Um, when I do use a, a thicker piece of mono, like uh, like a 12, uh, th so this over here is 12 pound maxima attached to this guy here, or is it 10 pound? Anyways, um, I'll then, I'll go with like a little uh, loop to loop here, uh, perfection loop uh, connection, and off to the races we go. But um, Back to the sonar leaders. When it comes to this, uh, I, I just I just do a, a standard clinch knot on the end of their little barrel swivels. Never had a problem. Um, now, when it comes to uh, the rigging of it, uh, that's essentially it. So you just put your tippet section on, like I, and like I said previously, I prefer uh, two to four feet of uh, you know more around like the two to three feet really of of uh, tippet. And then I'll just tie on uh, whatever fly I'm using. And I almost always use uh, this for streamers uh, uh, and soft hackles. Uh, and that's kind of what I use it for. I swing a lot with it. Now, if I go in a lake, I will use just pretty much all the time streamers with it until we get into, where is it here? The floating ones. Now, floating ones are a little bit of a different ball game. And why would you want a floating one in, in, instead of just like using a regular like uh, uh, 0x or 1x uh, leader? And the reason is, is that these are uh, more supple. Uh, they have a more consistent taper. Um, if that's if that's really a thing, I'm, I'm trying to like drive this home somehow. I find that these have less hinging uh, and and they and they cast really well, but they what they do really well is like they cast uh, really heavy wind resistant like uh, poppers uh, And this is like if you're using a more stout um, Fly line, so if I'm using like and of course I've done this uh, I will use a Skagit uh, <laughs> Setup on lakes. I don't care. It's fun. And this is what I would use. I would put a floating uh, polyliter on my Skagit uh, head and cast it out and it works great. So not to confuse anybody with the floating stuff, I will use big poppers and uh, uh, for bass, that kind of stuff, like really wind resistant flies. This seems to help turn over them better than uh, anything in, in the store. And quite frankly, and unfortunately, I have to say this, I'm just gonna just beat my ego down, but I can't tie a, a, a leader that will work like a poly leader. Another thing this thing will do, uh, which is really cool, is that, um, you can go nymph fishing with a paw leader. Like, let's say you want to go for like crappie or uh, or perch off 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 the pier because perch are coming in. I, I live in in like basically perch festival uh, area of Ontario, uh, if you know where that is. Um, and uh, you can what you can do is uh, you can rig this up with uh, an indicator, and then you know whatever like three or four or five even. You know, this is where you can kind of get a little heavier, uh, like six or seven feet of tippet, and then put your little whatever you want on there, like a like a white death or, or something, some type of zonker I, I find will work best for that kind of fishing. And then just launch it on your Skagit setup. And that's freaking pretty, pretty cool. When it comes to polyliters, the one that I use the absolute most, because this is the type of fishing I love doing the most, is... Um, is swinging flies and swinging soft hackles. And this right here is the 
pile leader of choice. And this is the, um, the, the, the one and a half inch per second intermediate. Love it, love it, and I love it to death. It is just, I can't live without having an intermediate pile leader. It just works so well on a trout taper leader um, for, for swinging. And uh, it just gets you to the strike zone every time consistently. And I always get grabs using the inch and a half per second. So uh, when I use like a, a, a more thicker, uh, heavier, dense one is when the, the flows are really up, are really high, uh, and uh, just if the things are kind of blown out a bit, I will then go to like a, a five inch or a seven inch per second just because um, with them, they, they just float too high, so you gotta get them down lower. Um, so that's that's why I would use that. So. Uh, I have, like I said, I have all of them. Um, this is just a sampling of some of the stuff I just pu pulled out. I want to talk to you about like the difference between um, now the airflow and the sonar leader. Um, the sonar leader, this is a 10 foot one. And I like what, what I like about this is that they'll put down what grain weight this is. And this is important if you're going to run like Scandi setups, uh, even Skagit setups. Um, uh, but with a Skagit, you don't really... I mean, a single hand Skagit, that's a different thing. Uh, you're not gonna wanna use like real heavy uh, sink tips, <clears throat> rather. Um, so this poly leaders work really well. These guys are really, really, really good. Um, they cast way better than any of these airflow leaders uh, do. I'm sorry to say it airflow. It's just, uh, SA, I don't know what they do to their poly leaders, but they cast really, really well. So if you're new at casting, um, and, and you kind of like, you know, flicking it a little too much or what, I don't know. Um, you'll get less hinging and less like, um, uh, uh, it, it, it won't jot as much to the left or the right, uh, with, with the, with this guy here. And that could be as well because of the length of it. I'm not quite sure. I've tried a B testing between the two and I found that just, I get less hinging and I, I get more consistent cast with this guy here. So when it comes to casting polyliters, um, you're not going to get these gorgeous, beautiful, tight loops. Uh, that's out the window. You're going to be opening up that loop a little bit more uh, to help that pile leader get around because, of course, these things have weight to them. They have some mass, and uh, <laughs> it's just the very nature of the design of these pile leaders. So if you're looking for absolute accuracy, you won't get them with a the pile leader. I'm sorry to say it. Uh, you, it's, you're going to have to have some sacrifice here. So there's a con there. Another thing is um, they make a lot of commotion on the water when you cast them. They, when they go down, they go down with, uh, with a good splash. So uh, parachute casts uh, help a lot, uh, you know, just like just stopping that rod tip high and then letting it, you know, kind of just gently settle down. But no matter what you do, because these things, I mean, this is a 50 grain pile leader. When it's coming down from the sky, it's gonna make a splash. So if you're in like really still water applications, you might scare that trophy size trout or bass or whatever you're after. Um, so that's something you got to keep in mind. Another thing that I want to say is that even though it is, and we've kind of briefly touched on this earlier, but even though it's a seven inch per second uh, rate of, of, uh, uh, of depth, um, it doesn't do that. It, it, uh, <laughs> Maybe when you take it out of the package and you just drop it, it will uh, sink at a seven inch uh, per second rate. But um, it's going to, like I said, it's going to go down like this, and it's going to, uh, it's not going to be even like a, uh, or or um, it's not going to have like a nice belly in it like uh, you would get with uh, you know a sink tip or a, a sink full sinking line. You're not, <laughs> you're not getting down uh, with uh, with any of these pile leaders. I'm sorry to say, it's just not going to happen. So uh, that's where a good sink tip uh, will get you down there on a Skagit line or something like that. You're gonna need that heft on on uh, on the end of your uh, on the end of your line if you're gonna even try to touch fish that are like eight feet down in like you know 250 cfs uh, waters kind of thing. You, it's just not gonna happen like that unless you put a lot of lead at the end and then you're gonna have hinging issues and all that. So. I thought I was gonna uh, mention some cons at the end here. Uh, it's not the end-all be-all, but it definitely will help you out. It's gonna, 
it just transforms your day of like kind of meh fishing to extremely amazing fishing. Pump the brakes. I almost forgot to talk about one really cool technique with poly leaders and they and it does it really, really well. It's tight line nymphing. And uh, and believe it or not, so I will use an eight foot or a, a the 10 foot pile leader and then uh, add like, you know, this is where I will put a bit more tippet on like four, six, seven feet of uh, of like, you know, straight two X or or four X or six X, whatever it is that I'm using. OK, at the time. And for that, I will use a uh, tippet ring. And it's because you're going really thin. Uh, so if you have too too thin of a of a, a material and you're trying to uh, stick it onto a thick material, you can do it, but it's going to be more efficient this way. So tip it ring. Um, and when you tight line nymph, what you're doing is you're looking at the uh, <laughs> you're looking at the the paw leader and a little bit of the fly line, and that's your cider. And I know what you're thinking. You won't be able to see it, but somehow this stuff right here is like really easy to spot in in uh pretty much any condition i don't know what it is about this dark material but i i see it just like i would see a cider so um and plus you're kind of feeling it anyways because you're tight lining but um yeah i will just you know kind of high stick tight line it and whenever I feel a tug or I just see the, the line kind of just really straighten up real fast i will set the hook and hook sets are for free and I've caught lots of trout on it. In fact, I even caught the prestigious, prestigious, pres prestigious, I'm going with prestigious, prestigious bugle trout. So I thought I would share that with you. Anyways, I think this video is much too long and I apologize if it's confused you further, but I hope I did a good job. If I did, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much. Please like, share and subscribe. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you so much as well for getting me to a thousand subscribers. That means the world to me. Uh, and I, I'm just excited to make more content for you guys. So tight lines. Have a good one. We'll catch you on the next video. Bye-bye.